Okay, so this is going to jump right into the start. My issue with the start is um, it's a little notchy. He like he just kind of falls right in in places. Um, my whole thing is balance ball, get over the bike, and control the motorcycle left and right with power. Don't let gravity play its game with you at all. Um, uh, gravity is great at higher speeds. I don't like it in slow speed stuff. So um, that's really my, my main thing here is just watching him fall in. Right, um, I'm gonna back up just a tad. So just those sections are just kind of falling and dropping in. Now in this long sweeper, watch this. So one of the things that, that I like to work on um, in my training drills, warm up drills, long, fast circles. Uh, that's where you're gonna learn lean angle, how far you can push the bike, uh, surface appraisal, but but as far as how much you want to counterbalance on the bike, depending on if you're dragging hard parts and you have an opportunity to go faster, you're going to want to go faster. So in this part, he drives out of the uh, out of the turn prior and starts pushing into the circle, which is great. But then about a third of the way through, we're kind of just cruising through here. I think we could have carried a little bit more momentum and kind of driven a little bit harder in here. <laughs> So all this here, and I understand this is following into a, a setup for a right turn. I would just say we could drive harder through this portion, start trail braking and dive in the front end a little, swinging out and, and diving in, making this kind of one smooth, consistent thing at a little bit higher, higher rate of speed. He's not dragging hard parts. So there's a little micro adjustment right there that you see. Not a big deal. And by micro adjustment, I just mean when you're coming in, every time you have to make an adjustment, whether that's throttle or that's wheel placement, you're upsetting the chassis a little bit and that's slowing you down. That's also uh, unsettling the rider as far as you getting ready to get back into your controls and move forward. So if you can, in your practice on a course like this, set up your wheel placement a little bit better so that he were to think this through from the standpoint of, driving a little harder all the way through that uh, that right-hand sweeper, swing out as you're slowing down, and then dive in wide so you don't have those little micro-adjustments. Those are just things, if you can work it out, obviously wheel placement, um, you know, half is luck sometimes, um, and recognizing he wasn't where he needed to be and making the adjustment is necessary so you don't hit stuff, so that's kudos on that. But if you can pre-plan those wheel placements so that you can get a smooth arc all the way through that, because it's not just about where you're placing the wheel. It's also about unsettling that chassis so you can carry more momentum and you don't have to make as many adjustments. That translates into speed and speed knocks your times down, which is what we're all trying to accomplish. <laughs> Um, I want to note one other thing too, um, watch his, it's just hard to catch, but if you watch the front end, you'll watch the forks kind of bob uh, up and down a little bit. That tells me that he's making adjustments with his clutch and or his throttle. And that means the front end's getting heavy and light and heavy and light and bouncing a little bit. And when it does that, you're not getting as good traction. And that's where you, you could risk pushing. Also, every time it's changing angle like that, you're changing the steering geometry. So it's actually affecting the radius of the turn that you're making. So point being, if you can set that, plant that front end and get a smooth, uh, smooth throttle and clutch so that the front end is not playing around with you around that circle. So it's kind of hard to see, but the front end's bobbing up and down a little bit. Again, you know, we're just nitpicking here. Okay, so through here, it sounds like we're free revving a little bit. Um, I would say, let's be in the power. Let's use our feet to transition left and right right there. Did he get through it clean? Yes. Did he win the run? I believe so. But you want to challenge yourself to go faster. Drive out of the section prior to. And uh, so drive out of here. And right here, we can be on the gas now. Okay, we want to transition from... It's nice smooth clutch throttle control around here to let's start accelerating. Let's start putting the power down. We see where we want to go. The bike's coming out of the circle. Let's start transitioning to power here so that when we get up to this other point, which is right over here, we're already in the power and we're just modulating and we're using our feet to get some rapid transitions through this section. The revving of the engine tells me we're coasting. <laughs> So there was a good drive. 
um, and you watched it. His weight got, listen, listen to the motor. Let's see if I can turn it up a little bit. Just listen to the motor. So you heard a little bit of squeeze out of that throttle. But then we transitioned to off throttle and now we're setting up throttle for the turn. So those are three separate things. I would recommend we do two things. We go from accelerating to braking and diving into the turn. So we're staying on the gas longer. How long are we on the gas? So, so we're only now getting on the gas. I would argue we could get on the throttle back right about, right about here. Now we're starting to transition. And we're really, so he's getting on the gas once he's straightened up. He can start transitioning here and we're on the gas sooner. So we're already on the gas here. Now, how long are we on the throttle in this scenario? We're off already, you heard it. It was just a quick squirt. I would say we could still be on the gas through this section, and now we're transitioning and we're trail breaking into this turn. Okay, I'm just gonna play it for you one more time. So you heard throttle, hard drive, just a quick squirt, and then you hear boom, you hear the motor kind of rev, which tells me we're idling. We're not slowing the bike down necessarily. We're the clutch is in. Well, we could be harder and longer on the throttle and then on the brakes transitioning into this section. So the nice thing is it's faster to do it that way and we're complicating it less. He's actually doing more work. He's on the throttle, then he's off. He's revving the motor, getting ready to drop in, and then he's dropping in under power. That's like three, maybe three and a half things. Let's, let's make that two things. Come around the previous turn on the gas. Let's come out of here earlier on the throttle, stay on the throttle. And now right here, we're transitioning onto the brakes, setting up the clutch throttle, and we're coming in here on the brakes, trail braking, planning the front end, turning a tighter radius, less math to do. So that was good. Right here, that part, you heard whoom, whoom. So he's definitely putting power to the motor to throw it around through this section. So this way better than the last time when he came in the other way. It sounded a little bit more like free revving and kind of coasting through there. This sounded a little bit more like we were coming in with power, which is excellent. Listen. Again, pay attention to the front end here. It's bobbing around this turn. Watch it. See that? I understand that these are tight sections and it gets tricky, but every time we're doing that, we're changing the radius, we're changing our traction coefficient of friction, right? All that's getting impacted. So that's dangerous as we try to push and go faster and faster. These are the types of things that are gonna cause us to lose the front end or push or hit a cone because the bike's not planted. Not to mention when the front end's bobbing like that, I guarantee you it's not a comfortable place for the rider to be as far as feeling like, yeah, I'm planted and ready to move hard into the next section. So as smooth as you can be with your clutch and throttle inputs, easy dragging of the rear brake, not hammering anything so that the chassis is smooth and settled. All this, I would consider this a transition area. We could have gone faster through here. Listen to the motor. Let me back up a tiny bit more. Listen to the motor. It's almost like we're just waiting to drop into the next thing. So it's little, but I'm, I'm gonna beat you by a 10th here and a 10th there. And it'll translate into a second maybe, right? Well, you're not gonna see it um, because this is just one little section. So if you're not paying attention, he did okay through here, but this is an area where he could just open up a little bit of an advantage, pushing through here a little bit more, setting up a little early and trail breaking into the next section. And using power to transition, that was good. This is all good. Hard for me to really see exactly what he's doing, but it sounds pretty good. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty smooth. Um, all I would say is when you're overlapping your controls, clutch throttle, 
getting onto the throttle coming out of these sections, he could probably get on a little bit sooner. Now that doesn't mean you're hammering your, your throttle halfway through your turn when you're at the apex, but what it does mean is you can start feeding your chassis uh, a little bit of power so that yes, you're going faster, but you're keeping the chassis kind of torqued down, I guess you could, is how I might describe it, where, where it's just, you don't have that rapid, hard sort of transition from nothing to something. You're feeding it a little bit of power so that when you're really into the power, it's not a huge upset of what, what you're doing. And uh, that's that's smoother platform for moving from point A to point B. Little micro adjustments here and there, but again, not a huge deal. Good counterbalance. Now, I feel like watching this particular section, it feels like we're kind of falling over a little bit. Like, again, gravity gets gravity is helping us. I just not a fan of that. We should be on the power. We should be into the brakes. We should be counterbalancing. Gravity's not my friend. I don't I don't want to rely on it for anything I'm doing. And it feels like right here we're kind of falling over. Um, one other thing I'm going to point out, it's subtle and it's a, uh, it's a little thing. If, see if I can get it just right. So on this left right here, it looks like, and I'm going to play it back for you, but it looks like, uh, under full lock left. And I don't know, maybe right. I can't quite see it, but under full lock left, once he gets into that full lock left position, it looks like it's pulling him forward a little bit. And here's my issue. If you are full lock left, full lock right, rapid transitions, and it's causing you to upset your body positioning at all, you're not going to have the body. That tells me your body's not where it needs to be, most importantly, for modulating the controls smoothly. So if when you turn the bars full lock left, it's kind of pulling you forward up over the bike a little more than you normally would have been, you need to find that platform where your hands are always loose, so this would be a practice day thing, get your butt further up than it normally is. I understand some of these seats sit far back, figure it out. Get yourself up over the bike more so that no matter how hard full lock you are, you're always your arms are never locked out, your controls are modulated nice and smooth. That's one thing I notice with people, you know, you just, and it looked like through here, it pulled him forward a little bit. It's subtle um, and he is generally, over the bike, um, but I'm just saying this might be an opportunity for him to make a, an effort to re-situate himself on the bike so that he's always in a more controlled, comfortable, unlocked arm position as he's modulating the controls moving through sections like this. So let's just watch it at full speed. Pleasure. All right, subtle, right? Um, so maybe you didn't see that. Maybe I'm imagining things, uh, but that's something I would pay attention to, especially on Harleys where they they kind of rely more on steering input than lean angle, uh, and those bars are pretty wide, so you've got a long, a long range of travel. Make sure you're up over the bike so your arms in full lock are nice and comfortable and loose. It's a little hard for me to really just kind of pick him apart because I can't see a lot of specific detail. Okay, um, I could go back and we could maybe piece piecemeal a few things. Um, I would just say in and out of some of the sections that we were just watching, overlap those controls. I would get on the throttle a little bit sooner and a little smoother. Some of the stuff, um, like right here, you're on the gas a little bit sooner. It just looked like a little, um, some of these sections, a little on-off throttle. And that looked like it was causing the bike to just kind of 
you know, it was on, the front end was up and then it dropped. Um, and I would just, I would just suggest maybe challenge yourself when you're on a course like this, how, how smoothly can you accelerate and brake and not cause the bike to bob and weave too much? If you're finding that you're bobbing and weaving a lot, you're accelerating hard, you're braking hard, I get it, that feels like you're going about as hard as you can do it. I'd say accelerate sooner and not quite as hard and brake smoother all the way into a turn. So you're overlapping. Remember, you're, we're handing off the braking responsibilities and we're slowly transitioning that into acceleration. And what you should find is you won't see these as exaggerated of these front end drop, and uh, and dive or you know bob up and wheelie. So just something. Don't get me wrong. This guy's flying and he's solid. Could I get on his bike and go this fast? I don't know. Probably not. So it's easy for me to sit on the fence here. But um, just one of those things to pay attention to. If it feels like you're maximizing the amount of performance, you're pushing really hard. Calm down. Ease the bike's controls and see if you can't get the thing to ride smoother.